Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing how to survive your diet and just a couple of practical tips to help you sustain a fat loss phase to make sure that you actually get to your goal weight. So our first kind of key tip is going to be avoid wasting time, right? Whenever we're dieting, we want to make sure that we are as efficient and effective as possible with the diet. Mainly, we want to say, okay, I'm starting at X date and I'm going to finish at X date or when I get to X weight or goal or time period, whatever it is. And we want to be in and out as efficiently and effectively as possible. We want to avoid dilly-dallying. We want to avoid wasting time and prolonging the diet because, you know, that's going to have longer term impacts on, you know, where you're actually progressing towards. It's going to slow you down, potentially impact motivation. And frankly, you just have to diet for longer. Um, And, you know, if you're dieting for longer, then performance might suffer. You're no longer able to make, you know, muscular gains as effectively as you might if you're in a massing phase. So again, it's kind of not really a good way to approach um, dieting, right? In and out, we want to be effective and we want to do it quickly and efficiently. Number two is, can you actually sustain the diet? So this is probably one of the most important things um, when we are considering dieting is whether or not you're actually going to be able to make it through to reach your goal, right? So is the time period that you're planning to diet for, is that realistic? You know, so is it 10 weeks, 20 weeks, 50 weeks? You know, are you going to be able to do that? What are the life factors that are coming into play throughout that? Are you dieting over Christmas or is it Easter? You have an anniversary, you have a holiday. Life gets in the way, so it's important to make sure that, you know, when we're planning our diets, that we're actually doing so in a way that accounts for these things so we can be more effective uh, and actually achieve what we're trying to achieve. If you are dieting for a goal weight, then, you know, that's a different story because we don't necessarily know how long that will take. We can plan it out and have a rough idea as to the rate of weight loss that we want to achieve, but, you know, doesn't always pan out that way as most people would be aware so when you have a goal weight or you're trying to lose say five kilos or five percent of your body weight whatever it is we often trade off not having a dedicated time period um, because it can be a little bit more challenging uh, to get both together and that brings us to the third point is if you are both trying to manage time and a specific weight that can be you know, particularly challenging. So thinking of, say, weight-restricted sports where you might have to weigh in at a certain body weight in order to compete. Well, if you have to lose, you know, three or four kilos by a certain date, it adds another level of pressure, another level of stress, and another level of complexity uh, to the diet. So again, making sure that when we're starting out the diet that we are going to be able to achieve whatever it is in that time period. So more time allowing... Um, you know, more wiggle room effectively is going to be better off. This kind of leads us into our next point is the rate of weight loss. So it should be appropriate for your planned diet, period, body composition, whatever you're trying to achieve. It would be unrealistic for a 50 kilo female to come in and, you know, who's already pretty lean and go, I want to lose five, 10 kilos. All right. That's maybe not realistic. Um, Maybe a person of that size and stature and body composition may be able to lose two or three kilos. Again, like that's still a decent percentage relative to their body weight, but we just need to make sure that the rate of weight loss that we're trying to see on a weekly or you know monthly scale is appropriate for your goals and your individual circumstances. When we are looking for a more assertive diet and we are looking to lose more weight in a shorter period of time, Uh, we can hopefully expect to see larger drops. And that often will come with, you know, a bigger deficit, you know, more activity, being more strict, more rigid, but we're doing it more assertively for the trade-off of a shorter period of time, right? Now, on the flip side of that, if we have a more prolonged diet and we're going for a longer-term approach and we want to lose a lower rate, a lower amount of body weight each week, something that's sustainable, then you'll be in a smaller deficit and it'll probably be a little bit less assertive, but something you can sustain for a longer period of time. There'll probably be a little bit more freedom and flexibility in there as well, which can be beneficial. Again, 
uh, tying it back to the second point, we just want to make sure that it marries up with what you can sustain and what you're trying to achieve. Um, we've already covered realistic goals, but again, just to kind of drum that home here is to make sure that when you are setting out to lose a certain amount of weight or in a certain amount of time that it's realistic. Uh, it often pays to have a coach, someone who you can bounce these ideas and goals off um, to make sure that what you're actually trying to achieve and work towards is realistic and it's not just a pipe dream that, you know, you're kind of like, you're always going to try and work towards but never really going to get there and you're just going to get frustrated and angry and throw your hands up and say, you know, what's it all for? So that leads into our next tip, you will call it. Uh, number four, hunger savers. So making food substitution. So it's not realistic to expect that you will diet 10 weeks all the way through your diet on the same food that you were pre-diet right? Um, something must change in order for you to see changes, right? It's particularly in body composition. So, you know, if you're currently, take, take me, for example, if I'm 80 kilos and I want to lose five kilos, I cannot can expect to lose five kilos if I continue to eat the same way that I do now. It's just not sustainable. So we need to take calories out at a point. We need to make sure that, you know, we're in the deficit and in that sweet spot of a deficit so we can lose the right amount of weight that we want for the goal and the time period that we have set. And then we want to make sure our diet is supporting that. <clears throat> so as the diet progresses, we'll likely need to slowly transition to lower palatable foods, right? Because you know, eating highly palatable foods often comes at um, the cost of calories. They're quite energy dense and we run out of calories pretty quickly. And that can see hunger um, become more of a factor early on. So to avoid hunger, we want to try and make substitutions that will allow us to eat more food and, you know, want to eat less of it effectively um, so we can, you know, feel full, feel, you know, satiated and continue to diet. Um, hunger is going to be a factor at some point in a diet. It should absolutely be a factor at some point. We just want to minimize it to actually make sure that you can sustain the diet. <coughs> so... This being said, when we're making substitutions, it may not be advisable to just go from, you know, eating what you normally eat at the start of the diet and going, well, I'm going to go down to, you know, 2000 calories or 1000 calories and I'm just going to eat all veg, all salads and chicken and that's it. Because think of it like a, a game of strategy. Uh, you've now used, you know, quite a few good plays uh, really early on in the piece. And then when you get hungry down the track, what are you going to do? Uh, you kind of back yourself into a corner with that approach. So instead, we want to do it slowly as the diet progresses and make gradual substitutions and changes to the foods you're eating to make sure that they are more, more satiating, you know, high fiber, things like that. So just an example, say week one, my dinner is chicken with rice. Great. That's a very boring dinner as it is, um, but, you know, somewhat calorie friendly. And then, you know, five weeks into my fat loss phase, I'm starting to get hungry and we go, okay, well, what can we do? We go, same amount of chicken, half the amount of rice and add in salad. Great. So salad is lower calorie, you know, gram for gram than rice. Like, let's just say it's lettuce, tomato, whatever, cucumber. Uh, that is lower gram for gram than rice, calorie wise, which means that if we equated calories, I'm now eating more food than I was um, at week one. However, if we say we want to cut out calories because probably we have in order to continue to lose weight by week five, we can save some calories at dinner, half a portion of rice and fill the volume up with salad. There we go. And then again, using the same kind of approach, we get to week 10, we're no longer having rice, we're just having salad. Again, we've saved calories, but we're still keeping food volume high so I can stay full and I can continue to exist and not completely hate myself. <coughs> Uh, tip five, so is opting for like a lower fat and higher fiber diet. Um, just one thing to be aware of and to note is that we don't want to just cut all our fats out. You would have heard this in previous videos from JPS and, you know, various other industry professionals. Um, you know, there is a certain threshold of fats that every individual will require um, for, you know, brain function, hormone regulation, 
and various other benefits. So we want to avoid cutting too many fats out of the diet uh, that can have, as particularly for a longer period of time, it can have uh, deleterious health effects and we want to avoid that. So, you know, kind of once we get fats down to the lower end of the threshold and we're not really going to push them too much lower, uh, then we really want to start looking for, you know, high fiber to make sure that we are remaining full and we can, again, sustain the diet. Um, so I suppose just on that, the typical uh, rule that we kind of use or I typically try and use with my particularly gen pop clients is not to go lower than, you know, half a gram of fats per kilogram of body weight uh, for an extended period of time. Uh, I would rather have them on, uh, well, again, I suppose individual um, preferences will come into play here. Some people do prefer a high fat diet. Some people can really go with a low fat diet and find it doesn't affect them. Uh, we just want to make sure that you're not going too far below that bottom end threshold. Uh, point number six is minimize deviations. Okay, so this kind of like ties into you know the first couple of points where it's like we want to be in and out of the diet. We want to avoid delays and wasting time and spinning our wheels, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, namely, a good way of conceptualizing this is, and we've all heard it, people diet. They do really well Monday to Friday. They're working, they're in their routine, they're training, they're doing all these things. The weekend comes, it's eating out, drinking, partying, whatever. And all of a sudden they come back in on Monday and they go, oh, I've, you know, oh, so good last week. And then I, oh, yeah, I maybe slipped up a little bit on the weekend. You know, they don't give you the full truth because, well, who wants to admit that, you know, they've stuffed up? No one really does. And then they have effectively undone most of, if not all of the great work that they did throughout the week. That sucks. We want to avoid that. Um, you know, maybe we can accept small um, you know, delays in progress, but again, it's going to drag the diet out and it's not going to be super efficient or effective. And if you have to diet for longer and longer and longer, uh, because you're not actually adhering over the weekends, not great. Um, so this being said, a good way of thinking about it is if you progress from here and you're going down, down, down five days of the week, and then you undo that work, well, the next week you're just progressing and we're going to, you know, kind of teeter around the same point. If you can, however, avoid those deviations and actually, you know, work out a way to, you know, maybe have your dinner out, but you plan and prepare and make sure it fits with what you're trying to achieve. Maybe you have one or two drinks instead of four bottles. Great. <clears throat> but if we can progress for five days, as a minimum, not go backwards and then progress again for another five days, all of a sudden the difference is quite large. And we start to string weeks together. You start to see momentum. You start to see progress all of a sudden you're down 500 grams a kilo, two kilos, and you go, holy crap, this is easy. I can do this. And that leads us into our last point, which is build and ma maintain momentum. So once you find your sweet spot, once you've started to lose weight, it's a lot easier to continue to do so because you get into a bit of a rhythm of it. You know, you understand what your meals are. You're, you're kind of, you're setting, the, you've set the foundation and now it's just like happy days. You can kind of just tick along, you know, you have a good idea about what you need to eat on a daily basis. Your training's probably set. You understand that, you know, you can't do everything on the weekends because that's going to see you, you know, go backwards. But, you know, you've worked out a way to at least see some results. Once you start to see those results, use that as a motivating factor to continue to see results, continue to put the work in and get to where you want to be. The sooner you can build that initial momentum, the better off you'll be because hopefully that'll motivate you to keep it up. Um, you know, typically we see that if people don't see that success in those early stages and if it drags out, uh, which it can if you're not doing all the right things, that can, again, as I said at the very first point, demotivate you and actually detract from what you're trying to do. And then eventually you just go, don't worry about it too hard. It's not for me. I'm going to diet next year or something. So in short, dieting, is something that most people these day, this day and age uh, do at some point in time, particularly we have summer coming up in Australia. So if you are planning a diet, make sure you keep these tips in mind uh, so you can survive your diet and more than that, thrive throughout your diet. So when you get to the end, you do it in one piece, you're not starving, you know, you feel good, you look good, and you're able to continue to live your life in a way um, 
you know, that you enjoy. And you haven't had to sacrifice all that much throughout. Of course, sacrifices are absolutely necessary. Um, you know, anything worth doing, they say, is worth doing right. Um, and, you know, dieting does take sacrifices. So make sure if you're going to do it, do it right, in and out. Make sure it's realistic. Make sure you're prepared to make substitutions and sacrifices. Understand where you can make those and just stick to the plan. And once you see that momentum, just keep going, okay? That is all from me. Uh, thank you all for, I hope, making it to the end. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, drop them below. Otherwise, we'll see you whenever you see me next.